Yo, what is happening, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. So this is a video I'm mainly making for my core audience, my subscribers. However, it might come in handy to people newer to this franchise. Now, what I'm going to do different compared to other guides and stuff like that, based on feedback from my own audience who haven't played this type of a game before, you know, lots of bigger YouTubers are using terminology which new players don't understand. Um, I'm going to try to keep this as simple as possible. I'm going to try to keep it as short as possible to actually get the most crucial information across to you. Because if I was to talk about everything in this game, what I've learned so far, and obviously I'm on a journey like everybody is, it would be an hour long video. But obviously I don't want to talk about this game for an hour. I'm going to try to keep it as informative as possible. So we're going to go in, start the game. So basically, guys, we all know it's a looter shooter, okay? I'm going to kind of take it for granted. You know what basically this game is. It's a looter shooter. You do stuff, you get drops, and the more stuff you do, the better loot you get. Um, and obviously, until you get, like, level 100 gear, you're not really too concerned about what you drop. Okay, so here we are at the main outpost. If you open up the map, this is basically like, I don't know, the tower in Destiny. This is your hub. This is where your home is. There's loads of things on this map here which you're going to be interacting with throughout your journey playing the, um, well, this this video game, The First Descendant. I keep wanting to call it The Last Descendant. I don't know why. Obviously, I've been hit repeatedly in the head as a child and now in my um, adult status. It, it, yeah, anyway, <laughs> so enough of that. So there's various things you can do here. Um, we're just going to briefly go over what you're going to do in Albion, as it's called. There is different world difficulties, but again, you don't need to worry about that. You can actually play on public servers, or you can actually ch change it to private when you're going out on the main map and you're doing all your quests. So if you look at the world map here, again, I'd say just keep this as public. You don't really want to do it on private because... It is more difficult, especially to do some of the, you know, boss battles, what you'll encounter later on. But anyway, back to, you know, the hub. So this is your main area. There's loads of different things to do here. Um, there's some things I've not even used myself yet. But anyway, we're going to kind of go across the areas. So these two here, these are like special operations you can do. A bit like strikes on Destiny. You can keep rolling them as many times as you want. They don't work exactly like a strike. I'm just trying to, you know, get the thing. So you can go here and you can do various um, infiltration uh, missions. And depending what mission you want to do, depending what rewards you get. And obviously, you'll be farming those rewards at some point later on in the game. But that's not too important at this stage. So you've got one terminal there. You've got another terminal there. Okay. Not really going to go into too much detail. So this is an area which is very important in the game. This is called... Well, this area is called Activate Prime Hands. Well, you'll be asking, what does Prime Hands do? Well, it puts up your character mastery level. Well, your descendant... Well, not your descendant. Your, basically, mastery level. Now, when you upgrade your mastery, you will get more allocation of modules, stats, all that kind of stuff. I think if we go here, it'll actually show. So, mastery rank up. Every time you rank up, you're going to get more Descendant modules, which we'll talk about shortly. Weapon modules, equipment inventory, storage slots, consumable. Again, all this, it, it sounds very, very complicated. You will get used to this throughout your journey on here. But basically, the main ones are what's going to make a massive difference to your build is the Descendant modules and the weapon modules. But again, we'll talk about that you know, a bit later in the video so that's the second place you're going to go to and then obviously going to come back around the map um there's going to be various npcs you talk to here as part of doing your quests there's the guide there's there's loads of different people but you know ultimately you're not really going to need to know that you know it's idiot proof the, literally the icons will um will come up you know, telling you exactly where to go. So, again, this is where you spawn in. You run out here. We've already been to those two modules there, which you'll, you know, have interaction with later. Mastery, mastery to make your character descendant stronger is down there. There's the mailbox, which, again, you just get in-game messages and stuff like that. Then there's 
an NPC who you talk to quite a lot down there, but again, we don't need to really bother with that. This is the Descendant Instructor. You'll be coming here, and this guy will be giving you missions to do, but it'll also be telling you and teaching you how some of the systems work in the game. So you don't need to know everything straight off. The only problem with this Descendant Instructor is that he, he, his, his mouth doesn't move, you see. So the Koreans have basically done it so he talks that quickly that you can't actually read it quick enough. It's annoying. And the problem is with this is that he tells you some really, really crucial stuff. I'm sure it's not just me. I can read pretty well. Um, but yeah, it goes that quick. The text is ridiculous. So you can go down these steps here. So there's a couple of things to note down. Well, well there's three things down here you want to know. Number one is this woman here, Aeneas, or however you want to pronounce it. This is where you research things. So I've just researched a new character. What? Yeah, so I've just researched a new character, Freya, um, who I'm going to start leveling up at some point. I've also researched a ultimate weapon, which we've not gone over those yet, but we will. Um, and then I've got a material called a precision phase exchanger, which is used to make your ultimate weapons even stronger, which again, I know some of this may be going over your head, but ultimately this is a place where you're going to be wanting to come because you research stuff. But again, that's not really for beginners. Once you've played the game for, I don't know, maybe 10 hours, you're going to need to start investing more time in, you know, coming to Anesis and, um, you know, learning things. So down here, you've got somebody who's going to make your modules better. Uh, what, what is it? Cillian? Um, we haven't talked about modules yet, but you will be spending a lot of time down here. We'll not go too much into that until we talk about modules and weapons. This is your weapon crafting bench. Again, you're going to use this to make your weapons strong. Well, your ultimate weapon stronger. You can min-max your stats on here. A bit like Diablo, what you do. Um, there's a shop vendor there, but we're not really bothered about that at all. So, this is pretty much everything you need to know about Albion at this moment in time. Again, this, I'm going to stress is a beginner's guide okay so don't get your panties in a twist if i've missed something out this is purely for people on my channel who want a quick overview of what the descendant is so now what we're going to talk about is the world map so basically you start at albion you go to kingston and then as you progress through the main quest line you'll unlock different areas these different areas will have different missions to complete so if you look at kingston here you've got three teleportation areas so you'll start off on one area once you've done all the missions in one area you'll go to a new area but there's also missions which will stay there for a while like destroy the Freud f the void fragments again don't really need to worry about that it's just a quick overview this is where you're going to be teleporting to these green circles once you're there you know the main quest line will actually tell you what you've got to do and so on and so on it's pretty self-explanatory so the last two things we need to talk about is well, let's have a look at the menu. So you've got your inventory screen here. We're not going to talk about the shop at all this video. We're not going to talk about the battle pass. We're not really going to talk about customization um, because that is something you can do later. Um, what we want to talk about is the inventory screen and the descendant screen, and then we'll talk quickly about the consumables um, towards the end of the video. So here is your inventory screen. You've got your player name up there. You've got prefixes and suffixes, which you can change depending on and um, what activities you do on the game a bit like destiny you do certain activities you'll be able to have your names um sorry your prefix your suffix um sorry not destiny diablo you have your descendant level now you can level up a descendant from level zero all the way up to level 40 obviously as you level up it takes longer to level up it takes more xp so at the moment i'm on 10,000 xp it takes 34,400 to get to the next level that isn't really too important, to be fair. Yes, your spells are going to be a lower rank, but ultimately your mastery rank is what is spread across, well, is your account level. So that is the same across all descendants. Um, and as that gets higher, as we've said earlier, you're going to get access to more weapon modules and um, modules for your descendant. So talking about modules, so... You've got three weapons you can use in the game. And unlike other games, you can basically have whatever weapon you want in any slot. You can't have duplicate weapons in a slot. So what I'm running with here is an SMG called the Thunder Gauge. You get this. Um, sorry, Thunder Cage. You get this throughout the game. 
Then I've got a different dream sniper rifle. And I don't know what... Oh, no. Right. There's a reason I've got two heavies on there, guys, which I'll try to explain to you later. But I wouldn't normally run with two heavies. I'd normally run with, you know, different ammo types. But anyway, so you've got three different weapons you can have there. So when you look at a weapon like this... Right, let's go back here. It'll show it better. So as you see here, I'm using a weapon. That 45 is the weapon level. You can actually level up ultimate weapons and make them stronger. How you do that is by you use weapons what are a higher um, level than them and you can basically merge them into your um, thunder cage, which again, I'll show you that very quickly before the end of the video. And it makes it stronger. So this weapon, I will eventually get it to the max level, which is 100. It'll be really powerful and we'll go from there. So again, you can have whatever weapon you want in any slot. So the weapon itself, you can modify the weapon... Um, by using weapon modules. You can see there on the screen, it's got modules. It's also got an overcharge thing, which we're not really going to talk too much about overcharge. We're going to talk about the modules. We're going to keep this as simple as possible. So on every single weapon, let's just take these off. I've probably got them all on wrong. So every single weapon, you can have certain module capacity. Now, module capacity up there in the top right is linked to your mastery level. The higher mastery level, which again, this is spread across your entire account, regardless of the descendant you're using, that module capacity will increase as you level up your mastery rank. The mastery rank goes from 0 to 30. You can also increase these modules in other methods, but again, I'm going to try to keep this um, video as um, straightforward as possible. So now what we're going to talk about is the weapon. So you've got all the weapons um, attributes there, the applied value it's calling it. Now you can modify that with all of these different modules you pick up during the course of the game you can actually farm specific modules if you so wish however we are keeping this video um, as straightforward as possible so you can see here that one 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 are all blanked out that's fine it doesn't make any difference however you can see there's little signs on that module there and that module there if i was to put this module on what normally costs eight module capacity you can see it there if I drag and put that there, it goes down to four guys. So what you want to do is have your weapon modules on these symbols. So weak point sight, I don't really want to use weak point sight. It's not great. Chill priority, don't really want to use that for this build. And we want to get something with those three lines on. Have I actually got anything? Rifling enforcement, that is a must have. So we'll put that there. So that only costs three now. So instead of it costing well eight sorry eight for that one and six for that one it's only cost us four and three so again for those different slots it does vary depending on what descendant you use and it's not the same for all of them um yeah so you want to put those on um the slots obviously it's going to make your build as good as possible and then the rest you can just do whatever you want so all these modules have different like um rarities so you've got ultimate rare well, you've got Transistent, which I haven't got any of these. Let's have a look if I've got any across any weapon. No, I haven't. So um, you've got Ultimate. Well, you've got Transistent. Trans Transessent, I think it's called, which is the top tier. Then you've got Ultimate. Then you've got Rare. And then you've got Normal. And then, yeah, yeah, you just got Normal. And obviously, the colors signify what they are. So obviously, on here, what do I want to do? Well, I want to use... Rifle reinforcement because it makes my firearm um, attack damage 12% higher. So if you look there, firearm um, ATK is 18.2. If I put that back on, so it's 18.2 now. If I put that back on and put it there, it's only minus 6.2. The only reason it's saying that is because I've obviously took things off. Um, so what else do I want to put on? Is, is there anything really I can do here? Well, there's action and reaction. I probably want to put that on because, look, that only puts my firearm ATK up 12%, but this rare version actually puts it up 17.2%, but it also gives me recoil at 57 We will have that on. So we'll just go through here. Fire up, fire rate, 8%. We'll have that on. Um, what else is the fire rate up? Oh, oh, no, we can't have that because we've already got a module of that same group. So as you can see, there is modules of the same group. We've just got to be a bit careful with those guys. Um, module socket type, Exanic. If you look there, Exanic. So you, you can't put two on 
of the same um, module type. So fire conductor, do we want to put that on? When attacking enemies inflicted with burn, you get 8% more. The descendant we're playing at the moment does not have burn damage. If we was using a descendant who has burn damage, we would obviously put that one on. Um, so again, you can go through these, put on, you know, whatever you want. It makes little, little difference. Um, sorry, it, sorry, it can make a huge difference. But at the end of the day, you kind of get the drift of what I'm trying to do here. So again, just for the purpose of this video, oh look, I've put loads of stuff on. This is my build. I've only got three module points left, which, again, we will come back to this shortly because you can upgrade each one of these modules. As you can see there, the little yellow notches, you can actually increase the modules even further. But again, we'll come back to that. So we've talked about the basics of the weapon and the modules, what you put to attach it. What we're going to talk about now is the descendant modules. So this is the modules which you put on your descendant to make them better. So again, you've got a module capacity, as you can see up there. I've already got 43 out of 43. And again, it's got these symbols on. So again, if I put something there, that would actually, you know, be more beneficial, which again, I will do that at some point. But the principles are the same as what your weapons are. Okay, there's nothing really to change here. Um, it, it works in a similar method um, to the weapons. However... You've got specific classes here. So if I take that off, you've got a sub-module and a skill module. Now, a skill module is basically something what only this descendant can use. It's like something what's special for them. Unfortunately, I've not unlocked any for v Vanessa yet. However, if you can see here, I've got water play, which if I was using Volby character, I could actually drag drop that in there and I'd get a massive, massive skill module effect on her um, one of her abilities so viessa will have the same as that i've just not got it and then if we look at the sub modules now the sub module is basically your attack melee attack um so if we have a look here we've got three here we've got kicking shot punch and short sword now but this character it doesn't really matter however if you was using i don't know um volby which is a good one she causes water damage. Now, one of her abilities is water damage is amplified when you electrocute people. So if you use some water damage and you apply the water damage modifier, you if you shock punch them with this power, it electrifies them and it causes even more damage. So that kind of goes more on to late game stuff um, where you'll be, you know, instead of just putting on what you think's the best, you'll actually be trying to get your own build for your actual descendant. So then the last thing on this screen, what we're going to talk about now, is the reactor and the external components. Now, this is... Let's have a look here. So your reactor is basically what gives you, well, what makes you more powerful based on the skills you possess. So as you can see there, it starts at the top. This is a materialized singularity reactor. Now, they all get named slightly differently depending on what um, attributes they have. So... The one I'm ruining at the moment is just the highest level at 46. Now, when I said earlier I'm ruining a sniper rifle with the same ammo type as my shotgun, that's because this has got an optimization condition of a sniper rifle weapon class equipped. So basically, my skill power is 40% more than what it would be if I didn't have one because I'm meeting the optimization um, condition. However... I'm not getting any skill power boost ratio because I'm not using a non-attribute skill because the attribute skill I've got is with Viesa is chill. So there's chill, fire, poison. Um, what's the other one? Chill, fire, poison, toxic, whatever you want to call it. What's the other one? Chill, fire. Anyway, there's four. I just can't remember the fourth one. Um, oh, an electric. There we go. So that's four. Um, so... The skill attribute I've got, as you can see there, with the little icons where it says Q, C, V, and Z, is the chill icon. So, unfortunately for me, I'm not getting, um, you know, the skill power of 100%. Uh, so, again, you've got skill power, you've got sub-attack power. Sub-attack power, like I've said, is your charged melee attack. Um, and then skill power is purely dependent on your um, abilities you have. 
as you can see here, there's 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 loads of different things you can have, but ultimately, as they're leveling up, until we get all this to 100, you're just pretty much an early game going to put on exactly what you want. Um, so the external components, what you do with these is, these all give you like slight buffs, like MP recovery out of combat that one's got, um, max magic power, which again is very important in this game, consumable drops. So, so basically they give you like little um, modifiers, but the ones in um, white at the top, so max HP, I get 94 more. Defense, I get 295 more defense, so that modifies the amount of damage I take, the higher the value, and so on and so on. Okay, so that is pretty much a quick overview of everything here. There is a Descendant screen. Now, when you choose your Descendant, again, at the start of the game, you've got a choice of three. Uh, you've got Viesa, you've got Ajax, and you've got somebody else who I can't remember off the top of my head. But basically, you can go on here, you can have a look at the passive skill, and then all the skills and what they do of your character. I'm not really going to go... Sorry, of your Descendant. I'm not going to go over them in full, just because it... You know, it isn't something you need to know as a beginner. You need, you've you've got to learn certain things on the game. This video is just about teaching you the very, very basics. As you can see there, I've leveled up Bunny to level 40. That's the maximum level you can get um, with any descendant. And once you've done that, well, you may as well just move on to somebody else. Um, yes, Viesa is weaker than what Bunny is for me. But again, I'm in no rush to, you know, complete the game as quickly as possible. So the next thing I want to talk about is the modules. So you've already seen me talk about the Descendant modules and the weapon modules. Well, what you can do, you can actually make your weapon modules stronger. So what you do, you go into here, you can enhance a module. I'm not going to talk about dismantling or combining, because dismantling is just straightforward. You just get rid of your duplicates. Basically, that's what you want to do. Nothing really to talk about. Combining modules, it's not really for beginners. Um, but enhanced modules is relevant. So you can see here, well, 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 you can filter it, but we're going to look at descendant modules. So you can see here, at the moment, we've got module capacity 43 out of 43. So unfortunately, we can't upgrade any of the modules um, we've got equipped. So that's not ideal for us. But again, if we add module capacity 41 of 43, we could increase one of these by two, and it would make these even more powerful. Okay, so let's have a look at Thunder Cage. Now, we've actually got three module capacity on here. So what we're going to do, okay, we've got a look. Well, what do we want to make better? Well, I fancy making action and reaction even stronger because, number one, that's in that three-line thing. So even if I put this up by one, it's, it's still going to reduce the module capacity, isn't it? So... Again, we've got 46 out of 49. We want to make this even stronger. So if we click that, it's telling us it's going to enhance it. So we're going to get 2%, well, roughly 2.5% more attack damage, and we're going to get a bit more recoil on the weapon. But we don't really care because majority of the time I'm using my SMG, I'm bang next to somebody, so we don't really care about that. So what we're going to do is we're going to enhance it. Again, it costs in-game um, currency to do that, but we've got loads of those shards and we've got loads of money, you know, up there, as you can see there. So, again, every time you want to upgrade these, it does cost you... Um, it, it, well, the, the amount it costs you does increase dramatically, but we don't really care. So we can increase this all the way from 19% to 35%. So that's how much extra damage we're going to get, guys, with upgrading this action and reaction module, which is insane. We're going to get loads more recall, but we don't really care. We're using an SMG, guys. So we'll increase that. Enhancing this module will result in exceeding the max capacity. Exceeding capacity. What? What? Oh, it's because I've got another weapon on. So there we go. We've increased that. We're getting loads more firearm ATK, so attack damage. And then if we wanted, we could actually increase this 
So again, that would get us more damage. So you basically do that with your weapons. You can do it with your descendant modules. So this is kind of how you're going to make your character even stronger. So that is that. We're nearly towards the end now, guys. Again, this is just a brief overview. You've got your basic stats there of your character. That's your firearm um, attack. Um, each attack method inflicts different damage with discrete ATK. Again, if we take that sniper off now and then we put something else on, let's just say that. It's actually put our ATK quite a lot up because that's really, really strong. Now I've got some dickhead outside beeping. They do this every fucking day. So yeah, I'll edit that bit out, guys. Some idiot outside just beeping their own all the time. Just need punching. Um, so yeah, we've gone over pretty much everything we need to go over now. Um, apart from the last thing, guys, which is the weapons bench. And again, like I said, guys, this is just a very, very basic overview. Just to get you started at playing the game... So then you're going to at least have a rough idea of what to do. So you can level up these ultimate weapons. So we're going to use this here. So currently, it's it's not really going to be ideal to do it. I'm not going to do it because there's not enough of a level difference here. But basically, I'm going to sacrifice that level 46 weapon to increase that level 45 weapon to a 46. So what's it going to do? It's going to put my fire rate... Well, me, me, the firearm attack damage is going to go up by 102, so it's going to go from 2857 to 2689. But I need one of these, Precision Phase Exchanger. Now, you can research these where I've showed you earlier, and they take about 10 minutes to do. You do need liquid metal, but you come across that quite often because you just you get that for discarding things in the game. So that's going to be how you carry on increasing this um, ultimate um, SMG. Um, well, any ultimate weapon. Obviously, this is the one I've got at the moment because you get this naturally through playing the game. So that's basically leveling your weapon up. You can enhance your overcharge ability, which we're not really going to talk about that. That's towards the end of the game. Well, well, it's it's not end game, but it's just later on. It's not really for beginners. You can do the same with your reactor. You can upgrade that, but... There's no real point at the moment because it doesn't make much of a difference. When you get to level 100 and you're getting level 100 gear, then this is where this matters. Um, and then something which you're going to probably want to do straight away because as you level the weapon up, the weapon's statistics don't go up, um, which I'll explain that because that's not really that clear. So you can readjust your weapon. So when I first got this weapon, it was, uh, I believe, around level 20. So the Toxic ATK, when I first got this weapon, was only 13. Well, look what rolls I can get now if I do it now when it's at level 45. I only learned about this myself yesterday. Um, so I can actually increase the Toxic damage, and it can roll anywhere from 109 to 298. It's 13 at the moment. Um, so you see where I mean? Like, I haven't done this because I didn't understand, you know, the system. And I know the system now. This is something... I've messed up on. So we need one of these fine adjustment control axes. Now, if you was doing this on a weapon what's not an ultimate weapon and it's a rarer common, you just use a lesser colored version of one of these. So we're going to go to the research station. I think it's going to take a minute for it to do it. But again, I'm just going to show you this for the video. Um, I'll sing Kumbaya while, while we're waiting for it to um, research. So what we need is... well. You buy them in twos, the 30,000 um, research time. Is that a minute or an hour? Oh, it's an hour, isn't it? Can we accelerate it for this video? I'm accelerating it, guys. And it's cost me real money to make this video. So please, if you've watched right until the end, type in thank you for spending real money on microtransactions. Um, just so I know you've watched it right until the end. Um, so yeah, I've actually lost money making this video because I don't make any money on YouTube, really. Um, so anyway, we're going to go back over here. So let's just all daydream and imagine that an hour has passed. So one hour later, we come in here. We're going to readjust the weapon. We're going to put on our best weapon, what we use most of the time. So it'll take more of these. It'll take more of these fine adjustment control axis based off more of the lock options, what you don't want to change at all. 
Why is it saying I haven't got any? Why is it saying I haven't got any? Why is it saying I've not got any? Did I not click on it? Oh, Whoops. What do you need? There we go. You'll get a little stupid animation what you get sick of eventually. May as well just take these while I'm here. And I've just got my new Descendant, which I'm going to skip that. I don't really care. Bulby is the next one I'm going to level up. And then we've got a phase exchanger so we can um, increase our um, ultimate weapon, make it even stronger. But like I've said, there's only a one level difference between our best non-ultimate weapon and the ultimate weapon. So again, let's try again, shall we, ladies and gents? If you've watched right until the end of the video, by the way, because we're near the end, um, can you just type in um, the first Descendant just to give me some GGs? Um, just so... It helps me with the algorithm. So again, enhance unique... Sorry, weapon readjustment. I'm losing it now. So we're going to put this on. So it's only going to cost us one. So we've got two. So what we're going to do now is readjust. There we go. We've got two ultimates. We've got three ultimate rolls, guys, which is amazing. So this weapon now is going to give us an extra 9.8 firearm critical rate so we've got a 10 percent chance of actually doing a crit bonus firearm attack versus colossus so they're the great big massive bosses you fight 574 electric attack power 229 and then attribute status effect trigger rate not 100 percent sure what that is but if you look at the role for that it can go from 8.2 to 15.6. And we've got it at 14.3. Which I think that's pretty good. So that's kind of what we've rolled, guys. Um, so now what we can do again, if we want to do anything and lock it, unfortunately we can't lock, we'd have to re-roll again. I don't want to re-roll again because I think we've done pretty well there. Um, I don't know if you've got a higher chance of getting the ultimate um, readjustments based on it being an ultimate weapon. But again, there you go. That's what we've done. We've made the weapon stronger. Um, and I think, guys, we're about there now. I don't think there's anything else we really need to talk about. Um, so, yeah, if you've enjoyed the video, guys, if this has been really informative for you and, you, and, and you've kind of learned a lot about the game, thank you, guys. If you could leave a like, that'd be brilliant. Um, I don't mind doing more of these videos, just talking about, you know, what I've learned throughout my journey. Um, if enough people like, I mean, again, if you've watched right until the end, just type in the comment section to help out for the YouTube algorithm, the first descendant. All right. Love you all. Take it easy. Thank you for watching. And if you've enjoyed, subscribe. Cheerio. Bye-bye.